Take, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Red Rubel. All right, good evening, Cougar Nation. And for the first time in the 2019 college football season, welcome back inside the beautiful BYU Broadcasting Building, where we have a full house for our season premiere of BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Great crowd, good vibes. We're just two days away from the Cougs' season opener against the University of Utah. All right, as always, we invite you to join the conversation by submitting questions for tonight's guests on Twitter. Just use the hashtag Sitake Show. You can also submit questions with the same hashtag on Facebook and Instagram on the BYU TV sports accounts. We have some good questions already in for us. Some of what you can expect on tonight's first show of the year. We will preview Thursday's big game. We will go inside the film room with offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes. We'll be mic'd up with starting quarterback Zach Wilson, and we will visit live with former Utah Utes and current BYU Cougar, Austin Lee. And to get it all rolling, let's bring in the man of the hour every hour during this week's show. He is the head coach of your BYU Cougars, starting his fourth season on the sidelines, Kalani Sitake. <laughs> Be the whole show and you do that the whole time. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for having me. What's going on? Fresh off the practice field, are you? Yeah, yeah. Not showered yet, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I just had to be here, so it was exciting for me to come see you, Greg. So, how you guys doing? Thank you for showing up. You guys ready for Thursday? Let's go. <laughs> And Thursday is going to be here quickly. Yeah. We're just 48 hours away right now. Uh, the boys are ready. I mean, they're excited. So we had a really energetic practice, and uh, they're feeling loose. So I'm excited to see them, uh, you know, take the field. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have great leadership on this team. It's been nice to see them just take over and, and make my job a lot easier. Well, last season ended on such a, on such a high note. Uh, you guys get to a bowl game, win your bowl game. Uh, you wanted perfection from your quarterback, and you got it in, the, in that game. And that's, uh, that's how you kind of springboard into, into 2019. You, you showed in that game and other times last year, Kalani, the hints of a potentially more explosive offense. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, there's, they're a little bit more familiar with what Coach Grimes and that offense, you know, that staff brings. And so uh, I think that they'll be a lot more comfortable. It definitely showed in fall camp, and so... Um, you know, we're hoping that, that it shows in the game and that I'm looking forward to seeing those guys perform. They, they worked extremely hard and so it's really exciting for me to see them get out there and show what they got. I was mentioning with Coach, uh, I think it was Coach Lamb yesterday on the coordinator's corner. You know, NFL, for example, has its preseason. Uh, NBA has its exhibition season. Even college basketball, they get exhibition games to warm up. No such thing in college football. You guys go right from the get-go and no bigger game than you could ever play than against Utah to start things off. Yeah, and, and I think the preseason for us is, is the offseason conditioning and, and uh, you know, the, the times that we were able to go live in fall camp and also the spring football game. So uh, we use that to help us uh, get started for the season. And, and I've been really pleased with what I'm seeing so far. We see those four straight P5s to open the year. You're the, you're, you're the only FBS team taking on four straight P5s in weeks one, two, three, and four. And something I know you love is that of those four games, three are at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And you've with such a focus on coach and his building and making it again a place where BYU can be dominant once again. Yeah, I want our guys to feel comfortable at home and uh, to use it as an advantage, you know. And, um, I, I know that uh, they're excited to be in front of the fans and a lot of their family and their, and their loved ones. And so I want them to feel loose and just have a great time and knowing that they're going to bring joy to a lot of their, a lot of their families and, and, and also to, you know, Cougar Nation. So um, I don't want them really worried about it just to go out and have fun because their family's going to love them regardless. And I've said it before, not focused on the end result more than the journey and, and the process of it, and, and we'll get the result that we want. How was your camp journey uh, leading into this uh, week one? You've been on the field already for four weeks. Um, how would you describe your fourth BYU training camp as head coach relative to what you wanted to accomplish? Yeah, we, I mean, we did some things that, that, that are a little bit unique to this year than, than other years, and, and that's uh, what I felt was needed for the team. And, uh, we've, we've also done some things that, that, uh, that, that we were able to traditionally do every year. And I think the physical part of the game, we saw that. We were able to tackle a little bit and, and put our guys in life situations. But um, for the most part, I've been really excited by, by this group and the way that they've worked all offseason. Uh, and, and the opportunity that I, I, I put the, the leaders in the positions to keep leading. And, and even guys that you wouldn't expect to be leaders, they, they've done it by example. Just get them out of, uh, you know, being 
the comfort zone and, and, and uh, speak up a little bit more, and it's added a lot to our team. One of the highlights of camp had to be a player-run practice that was truly they kind of had it from meeting from meetings to in the morning to the way things went in the afternoon. That was a, that was an interesting day for you, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I looked at, at the years past and the last three years, and and that practice has been kind of like the lull of camp in the middle of it, and and um, we thought it would be a really good idea to have the players run it, and and it seemed to be one of our best practices of fall camp, and they took a lot of ownership, and and it was actually a pretty easy uh, adjustment for the guys to do. So. Um, uh, you know, they, they, they had some play calls and things that were a little bit different, but uh, stuff that we think could really help as well. So um, I think the, the idea of, of collaborating with them is really important. And um, having the players feel that, that their, their, you know, their thoughts and their, their desires and whatever they, they want to add um, helps. And so uh, my job as a coach is to have them be free and open to discuss what they want and things that they want to do in the program. And then for me to just figure out if that really fits in what we're trying to get accomplished. And I'm sure doing that with them underscored for you their leadership potential capabilities and just how uh, how strong a group they are, right? Yeah, and just have uh, giving them the opportunity to feel ownership in it. And, and uh, we have, I've said it before, you know, that we have a, a, a large group of leaders on this team. And, um, and in order for them to lead, you have to give them more opportunities than just a coin toss to do it, you know. And so um, I, think the, I think being able to just lean on them heavily for, uh, things that they want to get done, goals, and, and um, things that they want to do even schematically, I think is really important. And, and it, it really helped the team grow, and they've become really close. And so it's been, it's been a lot of fun. There was a question you were asked uh, almost uh, every time you got in front of a microphone since media day till now, and that was always about the status of Zach Wilson's surgically repaired throwing shoulder. You came in with a plan. You and Zach and the coaches and trainers kind of stuck with that plan. How would you think it all turned out now that you've gotten through camp? Great. I mean, I think the, the key was been, has been for us to just keep him um, holding back from trying to do too much because that's he has a tendency to do that. And, and uh, I, I think, uh, you know, there are times that we had to, keep a pitch count on him and uh, even towards the end of camp I forgot that he had a hurt, hurt shoulder mm -hmm. that's how that's how he improved and, and how much it really became a non-factor uh, as we started getting towards the end of camp and, and especially towards a uh, prep for Utah so what did you learn about the process the rehab process that was maybe interesting to you about how he came through it from start to finish here well I think you have to be really deliberate with it and and um, you have to stick to your your guns as far as uh, you know, we, we have a process, we have a method that we have to keep things going. And even if he's feeling good, there are times that he felt like he could throw more. And um, we just had to keep keep with it, you know, and stay 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 the course of what the plan was. And it was it's been nice, and it's worked perfectly so far. Whether it's a Zach uh, Lopini Katoa, Matt Bushman, you've got five returning wide receivers, good offensive line. There's a lot of experience that has to give you confidence about the potential of this year's, this year's offense, but then you add to it some important newcomers, and you've already gone ahead and named one of them as your starting running back uh, against Utah in uh, Tyson Williams. Yeah, Tyson's done a great job, and I was really pleased with the way he worked with Soup and also with Lopini, Tyler Algier, Sione Finau, that group worked really well together, and it's a huge compliment to their coach. You know, A.J. Stewart's done an amazing job preparing that group, and, and I've been really pleased with the, uh, our coaching staff and the way they worked with their groups, but. Uh, Jeff Grimes and A.J. Stewart have done an amazing job with that with that running back crew, and I, I'm excited to see them, you know, do a lot of things on on Thursday night. So two of the two of those newcomers are grad transfer seniors, and one is right out of high school freshman. But Keanu Hill, that wide receiver, man, the kids out of high school these days look a little different maybe than they did when when. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks ready to roll. Well, I'll take all the ones that look like him as, as many <laughs> as possible. So, no, he he he's done an amazing job in camp, and he's had you know. Freshmen have a hard time adjusting, but it seems like the football part for him was, was pretty easy, you know, and so I think he's going to make a lot of big plays for us mm -hmm. in his career here, and he's a big target, and he's, he's created some problems for our, our defense, and, and uh, I think he's learned a lot from guys like Talon Shumway and Aleva Hifo, um, you know, Micah Simon. So uh, we have a good group of um, older senior leaders, but then we have a great group of young, experienced players too, and so... It just it helps having Keanu come into that room and be comfortable with the guys that are leading the way. Now he's an older junior leader, and that's Matt Bushman. We've got to talk a little bit about Matt because he's had a great camp too. Yeah, and Matt, Matt's uh, had, you know, he didn't play spring ball, but he's done a great job in, in uh, getting better with his, uh, you know, with, with his blocking. I know that's come in the, in the question quite a bit, but I think he'll do just fine, you know, and 
Uh, last year, he was kind of battling with a, with a hurt shoulder and, and, and just kind of pushing through it. Now he feels 100%, and um, that's good for us as a, for him being a receiver and, that, and also a blocker. But his leadership, the things that he does with our team is, is unbelievable. And I'm just glad to that, that uh, you know, it's only his junior year. He has a, a chance to come back again next year. Defensive side of the ball, experience back at all three levels, D-line, linebackers, secondary, and uh, Coach Tuiaki's defense has been statistically very solid uh, since you've brought him on as your defensive coordinator. And you see there are a number uh, of top 25 rankings uh, for the BYU defense in 2018, really keeping you in a lot of games and keeping plays in front of you a lot as well. Yeah, and I think the, the next step for us is, you know, we graduated some really important guys and guys that made a lot of plays in that senior class from last year. but. I think we have guys that can step up, you know, one even being a little brother of, uh, of uh, Kafusi. So uh, we have a, a good group of young guys that, that competed for a lot, of, a lot of playing time. And so, like I said before, it's like the offense, we have some senior leadership and some upperclassmen leadership, but the freshmen and sophomores are very talented. I'm excited to see them play, man. I, I think the, the, the next step for our defense is to be a little bit more dominant than we have been. And, uh, you know, and they're, they're expecting that from themselves. And, Great leader and Austin Lee to head, head the way. We saw uh, Zane Anderson there, and uh, I was running through some numbers today, and I realized that uh, he was your seventh leading tackler with a pretty high number, playing only four games last year. Yeah. That's how impactful he was. <laughs> yeah, and it's good to have him back. I mean, I'm glad that we were able to uh, redshirt him, and but he did that in four games, and yeah. so we're, we're hoping that he can stay healthy the entire time. But I think he could he could have pushed a little bit more last year and, and probably played the entire year, but. There's a point where we felt that, um, you know, I, I, I remember being that, that, uh, that age and thinking that I could just play through pain, and that, I think that's uh, inappropriate for me to do that with our players. And so I, I think it was good to let them relax, get surgery, and, and get some rehab going, and uh, I think we're going to benefit from it. So I'm glad we were able to do that. I think so. All right, that's a quick look at the Cougars. Fans, for your day-to-day -day Cougar sports play-by-play, -play, watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and here on BYU Radio. The guys will chat with my new radio partner, Riley Nelson, on tomorrow's show. When we come back, we go inside the film room for a closer look at the Cougar attack with offensive coordinator Jeff Rice. So we've got three wide outs and a tight end and a back. And we have the ability to hand the ball off right here. I'm Dave McCann. Wednesday on After Further Review, we look at five key Cougars who will be counted on to beat Utah. Best hour of BYU football on TV. Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, and Brian Logan explain the game Wednesday morning at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, and Saturday morning at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on BYU TV. I can't remember the last time I've had lobster. Or do I just sort of nibble at it like this? Are you ready for an adventure? I've set aside seven days with no interruptions, just to hang out one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have a vacation, a bonding vacation. And we are going to confront some of our fears. I don't like it. OK, I've had enough. I've had enough. I'm calling the shots, so you better be ready. <laughs> Do you know how scary that is to me? Yep. He's pinching me. He's pinching me. Uh, has anyone ever been thrown out of the boat? Only troublemakers. Why are we doing this, John? Because it's fun. Oh. oh, my. Is it okay if I cry a bit? Oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, oh. Monica, step back. He's going to love this, man. I'm petrified. We usually watch Jeopardy. That's about it. Oh, oh, oh. She's about to do this. I'm proud of her. What you need to do is channel excitement, exuberance, and love of adventure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Are you sure you want to do it? No. Jump! 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 Jump. <laughs> BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by... Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life.
We are back for more BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Let's take a look at our uh, game day schedule for Thursday night here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Pre-game coverage 8 Eastern on BYU TV, 815 Eastern on BYU Radio with over two full hours to get you ready for kickoff. Then the game is on ESPN and BYU Radio, kicking off at 1020 Eastern Time, 820 Mountain. Post-game coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio, followed by the rebroadcast of the game on BYU TV after the post-game show. All right, this season on the Satake Show, we're going to give you unequaled access to an assistant coach each week who highlights a few great plays from a previous game as he sits down with our Jerem Jordan. This week, we feature offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes as we go inside the film room. All right, here we are for the inaugural film room with offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes. Jeff, thanks for taking a couple minutes. Glad to be here. All right, Coach, let's break down some film. We don't call these trick plays. We call them specials. We think they're just another play in our playbook, and we expect to execute them the same as any other. And so this one started with a shift that's really just there for window dressing and to uh, disguise the formation a little bit. We moved our tight ends, moved Lupini, our tailback, out. And then just before the snap, we bring some jet motion again, looking just to uh, make the defense adjust to some things. Once we saw the defense react like this, um, we all felt pretty confident that, that, that it was going to work. It's a pretty good throw, too. It was, yeah. We, <laughs> we're fortunate. We got a couple of receivers who can throw. Okay, Western Michigan game, a touchdown pass uh, to Dylan Colley. So this was a fairly standard play in our offense. Um, a downhill run lined up in the pistol on this particular play. We're in 11 personnel, so we've got three wide outs and a tight end and a back. And we have the ability to hand the ball off right here if the defense plays um, soft coverage. If the defense plays aggressively, which obviously they are right here, then we've got throws out here that we can make to either of these two running a two-man concept or over here. And obviously when you get inside leverage, one-on-one -on -one coverage with a receiver down there in the red zone, you like that matchup. Looks like Zach's eyes are in the right spot, too. He's looking at Dylan, it almost looks like, right? He already knows where he's really going with the ball. He's just giving a token fake to draw those defenders up in there a little bit further. But he knew before the ball was snapped where he was going with the ball. Gunnar Romney, a guy who wasn't fully healthy last year, but when he was, uh, had some nice plays. It's a touchdown catch against Hawaii. Yeah, I think we certainly saw glimpses of Gunnar's potential, and I expect to see a lot more of that this year. This is a double move. So Gunnar did a great job right here setting it up. One, two, three, two steps to the slant, makes it look just like he's going to break inside on the slant right here, gets the corner to turn his hips, and then breaks off his backside hip. And again, Zach did a great job putting it right on him. We had really good protection right there that gave Zach the time that he needed to make the accurate throw. And let's finish with this. Uh, on media day, there was a moment where for 25 seconds, you stared into the ether, very focused, what was more focused, you in that moment or the BYU offense going into this season? Are you doing it again? I didn't notice. Was I doing it again? I've mastered the <laughs> art of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the human eye. I have no idea what I was thinking about at that moment, but I know our offense is, uh, is really focused on this game and looking forward to it. Well, I really appreciate the time. Great stuff, and uh, best of luck against Utah. All right, you bet. Go Cougs. <laughs> It's always great when you can break down the stare down. Right? Yeah, I was just just wondering when he was going to blink. <laughs> yeah, it never happened. It never yeah, came. I was, yeah. I was a, you can't. You can't. Uh, I don't. I don't think he's going to be. Uh, we have to worry about about Grimes and his focus. He'll be ready to roll <laughs> from up in the box. Yeah, I, I've been really happy with the way he's getting the, coordinating the offense and the way he he connects with his players. It's been amazing to watch. Yeah. Uh, what what got him here back to BYU? Um, you know, he had a great experience when he was working here before, um, when he was here for a couple of years and as an O-line coach. And I think when we talked, uh, you know, he, he went to other places like Auburn, LSU, and won a national championship with Auburn with uh, Cam Newton and others. And so I think when we talked, it was just um, the opportunity that he has to be around these young men. He just kept talking to how that was, that's such a, had such a good impact on him and his family that he was excited to come back. And, and I'm excited he's back here. 
All right, his first game as the second season uh, play caller comes up Thursday against Utah. Let's talk a bit about, a bit about the Utes now. Uh, hopes are pretty high uh, on the Hill. Uh, they're the preseason pick to win the Pac-12 and get to a Rose Bowl for the first time. Uh, some have the Utes even in the college football playoff. Uh, you know what a high caliber Utah team looks like. Uh, how does this Utah team uh, look to you from what you know, Kalani? Yeah, really good team. I mean, I think uh, Kyle said it as, uh, himself that this is uh, uh, one of his more, more the most athletic and talented teams, and so I'm excited about it too. I think we have a great team here at BYU and uh, I'm looking forward to the matchup, you know, so uh, I know they have a lot of expectations and, and a lot of things going on, predictions about them and uh, I'd like to see how we match up. I, I feel good about our preparation, feel good about our matchup with them last year and then I, I think we've made some changes and made some improvements from last year to now. So uh, let's get to the game time already and see what happens. So for the Utes, uh, from when you saw them last, they have a new old look, if you will, because uh, you didn't see Huntley and Moss in November. You know them well, of course. Now they're back and, and they're good to go uh, here to start the season. Yeah, we have guys they haven't seen either. They haven't seen Tyson. They haven't seen Zane Anderson. You know, there's a lot of players that we that they haven't seen as well. Healthy Isaiah Kafusi. And so I think we have some things that they haven't seen as well. And be a cool matchup, man. I, I think there's a lot of guys that we have on our team that uh, college football is sleeping on. So, uh, this is a time to wake it up and see what happens. But, you know, we have a lot of respect for Utah and, and uh, you know, my connection with Kyle and, and mm -hmm. that team. So uh, it doesn't change the thing on what we want to get done. And, and I want our guys to, to remember it because it's going to be a lot of great memories and for them to enjoy it rather than focus on the end result. That, that'll happen the way we want it to if we just take care of business. Now, last year, Kalani, you were working with your first-year offensive coordinator. And although Andy Ludwig's been there before, it's been a long time, so they're working from fresh with him. He's a first-year guy, again, mm -hmm. with Utah. What do, you, what do you get or what do you expect from first-year coordinators in first games, and, and what do you think he's going to show knowing his tendencies as you do? Well, Andy's a really good coordinator, and he's been doing it for decades, you know, so uh, there's a lot of film out there on him. And, and he, he does an amazing job at taking talent and utilizing it and so we understand what the talent that he has on this team and uh, with, a, with a back that's um, that's returning and has a lot of praise and a lot of uh, accolades going with it and, and a quarterback that's experienced so uh, we'll start there and see what happens man I I think uh, you know Ludwig is really smart and this is uh, an adjustment they have to make with a new system coming in and uh, you know we feel comfortable with our system with our our offense being in the second year and our defense being in the fourth year so uh, we'll see how it matches up. I, I'm not going to make any predictions, but I just know we feel comfortable and I feel excited about our guys taking the field. Uh, and our guys are really excited about the opportunities that they see. And, uh, you know, I think they, I, I understand the praise that they're getting and I, I respect that. But uh, when, the, when the ball goes up on, on, on Thursday night, it's anyone's game. And so, you know, we, we've been in this situation before where people haven't really have they looked past us. and. I think we have ways to making them remember us. Just a quick word about their defense. A defense, you ran up there for six seasons. You were their coordinator for a long time. And then and now, uh, you are known and they're known now for you know, stifling secondary, uh, great pressure up front. Uh, and they don't always have to blitz to get pressure, right? That's kind of one of their hallmarks, isn't it? Yeah, and they, they, they have uh, amazing depth, you know. And I think um, that's something that they've always worked on. This defense was always first when we were there. And, and um, so you get the best athletes and you get the best depth. Um, you know, they're, they're really heavy on stopping the run first. And uh, that's one of the things that they hang their hat on. And so uh, I don't really care what it takes to score points. It doesn't matter if it's throw or run. Let's just get points on the board. And, and I think we have an offense that can, uh, whether the defense is trying to take something away or not, we can, we can really uh, have an, an effect on the game and, and get some points on the board. So they're a good team, but you're a confident team. And if you can beat yeah. that team on Thursday, you can look at the, your schedule and say, let's go. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, I think our guys have been pretty bold in, in, in uh, the excitement that they have in going to this game, but it's just not talk, you know. And the guys talked about it a lot in media day and everything, but they've, they backed it up with the work. And so I feel confident with the game because I just want to get to it and see where we match up. And uh, a team that, that is, that's getting all this praise and they're in a position where they they should win the Pac-12 and they possibly can get in the college playoff. Let, let's see how we match up. I, I, that's our guys are really and they're anticipating this game and they're excited for it. And I'm I'm excited for them because the hard work, you know, that they put in, I'm excited to see what they can do, not just this game, but the season. I, I think this is just happens to be the first game of the year and we've been chomping at the bit for this season to start. Can't wait.
All right, as we head to break, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. And this reminder, Monday is at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. We talk with the BYU football coordinators on the coordinator's corner with OC Jeff Grimes, DC Elisa Tuiaki, and special teams coordinator at LAN. That's Mondays, 1 Eastern on BYU TV and on demand on the BYU TV app. After the break, Coach Sitake taking your questions in studio and from social media and the Cougars weigh on their matchup with the Utes. Utah Utes. Uh, you don't want to say it around here. I think my brother said it best. He said unfinished business. The fixers, we're, we're a tight-knit group. My whole team is very diversified. It's crazy how well we mesh together. These guys are my family now. You know, they're my brothers and sisters, and, uh, you know, Kieran's like my granddad. <laughs> All of us work as a fine, tight, well-oiled machine, and we work as one unit. Any excuse where I can use my two hands to build something, it, it, that's a good day. I don't know. There's something satisfying about just being able to use a power saw. I've always had a passion for building since I was born. I don't know if SWAT team is the right word for us. I really think it's uh, superheroes. I want people to know it's all real. This has changed my life. We are helping thousands of people. It's the hardest I've ever worked in my life, and I couldn't be happier. To rise and shout because a new season of shows are out. For starters, the Family Cooking Showdown is back with an all-new season of Dinner Takes All. Then, discover which generation really is the best in season two of Battle of the Ages. And gear up for new episodes of BYU Sports Nation, Countdown to Kickoff, and the BYU TV Sports post-game show. Summer may be winding down, but the competition is heating up all September on BYU TV. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Thursday marks the first ever season opener between the Utes and the Cougars. And it's also the second matchup in three games for BYU against the Utes. Here now, the Cougs discuss the emotions of playing the Utes right out of the chutes. Um, ah. Uh, the enemy, you know, the other side, you know, they call them the North, um, you know, the team that we're trying to beat every day right now in our preparation. So it's it's a very negative connotation when they, when they get brought up. Hatred, I guess, hate. But we love them, we love them, hate them, hate them. Utah Utes, uh, you don't want to say it around here. I think my brother said it best. He said unfinished business. I mean, I think he was, he said it haunted him for a little bit. We're excited. To, to play them, and we're, we, we know that we're gonna have to play at the top of our level and to perform at the best that we can. That's a game where the whole state is, uh, is, is really passionate about. It's, it's, a, it's a game or a rivalry that can, um, it can really get people to act out of character. You know, whether you're a fan, a player, a coach, uh, it doesn't matter, but that, there's so much passion in that game. I think it's a long tradition that's lived ever since I was a little kid, and, um, you know, you know, reminiscing after the game, it was crazy to think I was sitting in the stands just the year before, and you know, I couldn't have told my, I wouldn't have been any money that you know, in, in a year I'll be sitting right there. You know, guys competing and, and leaving it all out there for something really bigger than than football, and so uh, I get excited every time I think about it. Right now, it's the the, um, the emotional responsibility. We feel like we're carrying. All of, all of BYU, all the fans on our back, and this, this um, losing streak has to stop. A lot of appreciation for them. They kind of helped me grow as a coach and wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. And so now that I'm here as a football coach, it's even crazier that I grew up a BYU fan, I got to play at BYU, and then now I'm the head coach. All right, let's go. 
every week. We invite Cougar Nation to use hashtag Sitake Show on Twitter as well as the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A sessions. And speaking of which, we've got live audience and social media questions queued up and ready to roll. We'll begin right here in Studio C with Brenton Farrell at the mic. Hello again, Brenton. Hello, Greg. Coach, it's good to be here. Good to be the first question of the new season. <laughs> um, so with this big matchup coming up on Thursday. What do you feel, Coach, is the best or the biggest advantage that your team has over what is allegedly a really good Utah team? Well, really good Utah team, but we're at home, you know, and that's, uh, I'm excited that we're at home, so are our players. So the fact that we're gonna have our, our team here and we play in the stadium that's named after a man that I admire a lot. So uh, we're gonna be in Lavelle Edwards Stadium and, and with our home crowd rooting us on, that's gonna be a a big part that, that I think will, will factor and help us out. Thanks, Brenton. Uh, social media from at YorkSama84 asking, your coaching staff has always preached the importance of ball security. With how critical turnovers have been in recent rivalry game history, have you taken a different approach this week to reemphasize that to your team? Just trying to focus on, on uh, being smart with the ball and that we, we, you know, we carry the program in our hands. We have it and be mindful of it rather than focused on don't fumble the ball and don't throw interceptions. I want our guys to be aggressive, but you know, it's, it's another thing when you're saying to, um, don't false start, that all they think about is the end result, which is false starting. So you talk about things like stay focused, know your assignment, know how to line up, and, uh, and, and make sure that you know your technique, and then focus on the count. And that, that, that's another way of saying that I think would be, that is a much, more, uh, a much better approach for us. And, same thing with the ball security. We've had really great ball security in, during camp, and it's because we're mindful of it. There's no jinx or anything attached to it. Just being more mindful and knowing that that, that is such an important part of our success. Turnovers are one thing. The turnovers that create points against are another, and it seems like Utah's had a knack of uh, scooping scores or pick sixes in this game, and they've helped to turn games sometimes. Yeah, and I think the key is probably being loose and just playing and not being so tight when we take the field, and I think a lot of that has to go into preparation and being confident, you know, and, I think our guys feel confident going into this game. They prepared well, and they should have no reasons to, to feel tight at all. Okay. Next question from in-studio is from Charlie Jensen. Hi. Um, <laughs> do you speak in, um, do you speak, do you speak in language under, other than English? English, yeah, I, um, I, I'd probably need to speak Tongan better. But um, I live in the United States where it's not really needed that much. But, yeah, I understand it a lot more and I speak it. Um, I served my mission in Oakland, California, so Spanish came along, came handy as well. Um, other than that, yeah, I, I, um, I'd like to learn sign language. I'll start with this one first. <laughs> <laughs> Can you speak some basic, basic Tongan? Yeah, I mean, and then, you know, I... I some basic and some ones that I probably shouldn't speak as well. So. <laughs> uh, social media at uh, ZBYU Manwaring, I think. Uh, what's your most memorable moment with Coach Whittingham? Also, what is your most uh, maybe embarrassing memory with Coach Whittingham? Either or. <laughs> I probably won't do the embarrassing one. But uh, no, he's a great friend. And, uh, you know, we meet up quite often in the off season, And uh, we talk regularly. Obviously not before this game, but uh, he's a good friend of mine and I uh, love him, you know, so uh, conversations and things that we have. I mean, I, I've had a lot of great uh, moments with him. I remember one that probably was that stuck out in my mind is when we I got hired. It was they were prepping for the Fiesta Bowl take on Pittsburgh in 2004. And I was there and he invited he and Urban invited me to go to the Fiesta Bowl. And, and um, you know, I met with Kyle and I just told him, I said, I, I'd rather go to a bowl game that I deserve when I'm when, with you when we're working this. And it was really cool to do that four years later. And so, um, you know, now that, now that he's there and I'm here, I, I have other goals in mind and, and other great things that I have in mind. But uh, it was, it, we've shared some great moments and we'll always be friends. And that relationship, this game won't take away from that relationship. Even if you end up with a few wins against him, you'll still be friends, right? Of course, yeah, that's, <laughs> let's test it out and see. <laughs> I was, uh, I was on the, uh, the website, The Athletic, today, and they did a, a profile of Coach Witt's BYU days. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, I mean, there are a lot of former Cougars that, that will never think of him as anything other than a Cougar, because that's what he was, and a good one for a long time here. 
Of course, and, and he had, I mean, he was a WAC player of the year, and he was a tough player, and uh, really just, a, you know, his father was a coach, Fred, Big Fred, and, and uh, you know, my father was friends with Big Fred, and so uh, it's, been, it's been really cool to watch him um, grow as an as assistant coach, but even as a player and as a fan, seeing him as a player, going to be an assistant, being a coordinator, being a head coach, and uh, it's been really cool to watch him and, and the way that he's kind of grown and the things that he does. He's got a great big heart, you know, and I know it's all about toughness and he's really big on that, but he's done some really good things for a lot of people in the community and uh, I'm just really proud to be his friend. Okay, next up here in studio, we have at the mic, Wesley Pratt. Hey, so, uh, Kalani, my question for you is, what's your favorite memory of Lavelle Edwards? Lavelle Edwards? Um, the guy was awesome. So, I don't know, I just love him. Uh, I wish he was still here. I, I enjoyed uh, talking to him. Met with him every, as much as I could when uh, the year that I was head coach. And there are some things that he shared with me that he concerns about the program that he had and some things that he was excited for me to be here with. And uh, I just, uh, probably the best moment was just being, being involved with him and Patty. And he was able to mentor me, you know, challenging me in a lot of different ways, spiritually and, and also physically. But it wasn't just about football with him. And... Um, you know, we would meet regularly and, and he would always talk about what are the players doing uh, with service. That was the one thing that he cared about the most. And so I have a message from him when he, that he left from me when, uh, in 2016 that I always cherish. And I've shared it with some other people, but um, it's just how, how proud he was and talked about the program. We were getting ready to play Toledo and he left a message to me about how proud he was of this program. And me being the head coach and we were one in three at the time just said good luck and told me to love me and then you know the rest was history but that's that's what we were one in three so the things that, that mattered to him the most was service and you know remembering that we represent the church and the gospel and and the way that we play which is why sportsmanship is a huge part of how we play and and uh it's just a great man i, I could talk to i talk about him forever that that great mentor and i'm i'm very glad to be a player under Lavelle Edwards. Your current players are separated from his coaching days by about a generation, and so they don't have, maybe have, have, have quite the appreciation that, that you or others might. You brought in his wife, Patty, to speak to your team uh, during camp. Um, what were your feelings uh, watching her speak to this group of guys that are kind of being introduced in some ways to who he was? The highlight of the camp, to be honest with you, and, and that's not from my words, that's the words from our players. And so... Um, it was a surprise. I, th I think, it, you know, I took for granted that everyone knows Lavelle Edwards and this young group, but I don't think they understood what he's done for college football. So we tried to educate them a little bit more on what he's done and impact in college football and BYU. And then um, who knows him better than Patty? And so we met with Patty at, at, at the stadium in the Cougar room and walked in. The players were, ex we w went through a mock game situation where we went through a a mock you know, cougar walk, and then as we walked into the cougar room, she was there uh, with a you know with a podium, and, and we had the chairs around, and the players sat down and tried to scoot as close as they could to her. She spoke to the team, and she was brilliant. She was awesome, and and it was a, a wonderful. I wish we'd record it, but it was probably good that we didn't because it was something that had a huge impact on the players, and it wasn't just about football. And the level of confidence that our players felt when they left that room was amazing, and so. Uh, I got to have her speak to the team more often. It, it, for me too, you know, it was great for me and the coaches, but it was a, it was a the highlight of camp and from from our players and for me, it was awesome. That's great to hear. And uh, thanks for the uh, questions, fans. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, after going to the Final Four last season, the BYU women's volleyball team is ranked number nine and starts the season this Friday at home against Boise State at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, live on BYU TV. Coming up next, we go inside the helmet of BYU quarterback Zach Wilson. You guys hit me. Go. Oh, yeah. I got the best ball secure on the team, coach. And we visit live in studio with the former Utah Ute and current Cougar safety Austin Lee. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake.
I'm Dave McCann. Wednesday on After Further Review, we look at five key Cougars who will be counted on to beat Utah. Best hour of BYU football on TV. Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, and Brian Logan explain the game Wednesday morning at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, and Saturday morning at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on BYU TV. The script. Ooh. Perfect. The script for tonight. Perfect. Got eyes on Haley. Right. For tonight. Oh, thanks, Tad. Thank you. Let's go try it out. Casey, for tonight. Thanks, Tad. Any changes? I don't think so. Perfect. Here we go. Oh, right there. Hot off go. the press. Like, oh, oh, perfect, 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 perfect. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow. For tonight. Thank you. Perfect. Hey, here it is. Oh, it's all right, we're live, guys. Let's make it happen. Come on in, first team. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your cast. Tonight's show is going to be completely made up on the spot. Give it up for the show. Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. And as we continue with uh, tonight's show ahead of the fourth and final week of the NFL preseason, let's uh, check in with our Cougars in the National Football League. After three weeks of preseason play, uh, Taysom Hill has uh, scored three touchdowns and completed better than 60% of his passes. And his throws for the Saints, uh, Bronson Kafusi is now a Jet, along with Harvey Longy. More on that in a second. Kyle Van Noy had a sack for the Pats on the weekend. And Daniel Sorensen has racked up uh, nine tackles for the Chiefs so far in the exhibition season. And here's that photo over the weekend. We had the Saints playing the Jets. So we got Taysom Hill, Harvey Longy, Bronson Kafusi, Corbin Kafusi all together. Great to see those kind of picks. And they happen uh, kind of frequently these days, it seems, Kalani. Yeah, the Kafusis are giants. <laughs> Jeez. It's like, uh, Taysom and Harvey aren't small either, you know, but yeah. Glad we have, we have uh, you know, the younger brother, Devin, and the two cousins, so try to add more to the, to the clan. They leave campus and the hair gets a little longer, the beards get a little luxer. Yeah, it's, a kind of <laughs> it's like a famous thing to do, grow your beard out and, yeah. and let your hair grow a little bit. Rebels. Yeah. yeah, looking good though, getting it done. <laughs> all right, uh, each week we take you inside BYU's practices with an all-access look at a day on the field for a BYU player. And tonight's featured Cougar is sophomore quarterback Zach Wilson. And this is Mike Dub. Just one charge. Let's bring it up, baby. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's have a good day today. That's nice, Bush. You guys can hit me. You guys can hit me. Go! Oh, yeah. I got the best ball secure on the team, coach. There it is. Nice. That's a good ball, Baylor. Nice. Good job, Blake. Way to see the blitz. Oh, yeah. That's a tug. Hey, we got to pick it up, baby. Let's go. Hey, good job. Nice catch, pal. Hey, offense, offense, offense. Let's go. Right here, right? This is where we got to pick it up. Let's go. All of us together. Let's go. Let's go. That's a 
he can. Hey! Hey, good job, guys. Good job, Kyle. Good job, Kyle. Good stuff. Take care of your bodies, take care of your arms, okay? He was on three. One, two, three. Two. All right, in 48 hours, the BYU Cougars will be going through pregame warm-ups ahead of the season opener with Utah in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. A player who has warmed up for this game on both sides of the field joins us now as our first player guest of the new season here on the Sitake Show. And he's one of the very best defenders on this BYU team. Please welcome into Studio C, safety Austin Lee. Good to see you, Austin. Thanks for coming. All right. Have a seat. Thank you. So let's start with a fact check. Uh, it says in your online BYU bio that you were on a state championship high school football team at Alta 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I mean, I was, I was a freshman at the time. But still, so 2009, time, right? Yeah, time, time flies by. So I was a <laughs> freshman, went on a mission. Um, and then even a redshirt year, so five years being, being in college football as well. So 10 years ago, it flies by. <laughs> I can't, can't believe it. Uh, let's talk, you had mentioned a little bit, but the, the path that took you from Alta eventually to BYU, it was kind of a long and winding road, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was a long one. Uh, different dynamic also growing up. Like growing up, I was very, I guess, like my dad played baseball at Utah. My grandpa played football there. And so Utah was always a big um, school in, in my mind right and the team that I, we would cheer for and then as I got older and recruiting started opening like I was just kind of an I was an open book I wanted to you know have my options open and so uh, it, it was a different it was a different ride and but once once that recruiting process started uh, Utah at the time felt very I felt very comfortable and I played well up there and the aspects seemed to be you know fitting for, for my favor and so I committed and then after after my mission, uh, just coming back, things didn't feel feel right. I had a different perspective, and and uh, I was I was married. I had a kid, and so I had a different dynamic and feel for things, and ended up here. So uh, it's been a long journey, and you know, ten years from when I started high school, but it's been very enjoyable. Kalani, what's your background with Austin? I recruited him, yeah, th that other school. <laughs> and so uh, no, I. I um, I, I recognized something about him when I first started recruiting him and watching him at Alta and the, just the, the greatness was always around him. He, he willed his team to win. He, he had this leadership quality that was uh, hard to match anywhere else and has just drawn to him. You know, he, he's such a good kid and, um, and so it seems like a long time ago, right? But, but uh, when he committed, I was just really excited about him and then when I got here, I was like, dang it, he would have done so well here. And, you know, I, I, I just don't recruit from other schools. That's not what I do. And I was just really happy when he called and said that he wanted to transfer down. It made my day. And there was no, no question that I, I wanted him in this part of this team. And he's done an amazing job. He's from a wonderful family. And uh, just been really happy to have him part of our program. And so we're looking forward to this season. And he's done some great things already. And some things that he's done this, the, since his time here at BYU is going to last us quite a, quite a long time. The, the way he's prepared the young guys and not just in the position group, but he's given so much of himself to this program. And I think BYU fans should be really thankful that he came here. Austin, what was your perspective on this particular game when you were up there? And what's the perspective on this game now that you're a Coug? Uh, I think I think first and foremost is I, I'm just a competitor. Uh, I like to win. And, and uh, so when I was over there, I was I was all in. I'm all into anything that I do. And so at the time, um, I wanted to win. and. I was having fun with it. And so I just remember the game. It's always been a very high intensity and high emotion type type game. And so uh, being over here, uh, it's it, this program has meant so much more to me that my emotions are so much higher. My mm -hmm. drive to win, my drive to, like Coach Kalani said, of helping the culture of the team and to make sure everyone's ready uh, has been, my ambition has been stronger here because this place means so much more to me especially as being a senior. And so it's, it's, it's almost a different type of feel right now just because of that, that type of meaning. But uh, I'm, I'm a competitor and I'm excited to play this game. Last year, you had a few weeks between the Utah game and the bowl game, right? What were those weeks like uh, for you and some of the guys? Uh, so, yeah, it, it left a bad taste in our mouth. Like we, we obviously didn't get the, the game done. We couldn't finish. 
and execute all, all four quarters. And so uh, just understanding that, uh, it, made, it made us mad. I mean, we, we understood that we, compete, we can compete with the best. Uh, if we're executing all four quarters, we can compete with the best of the best. And so having that two weeks off just really showed us that we can compete with them, number one, but that we're going to have to finish the season off take, it off, take it out on Western Michigan, execute then, and then understanding that we have them for game one for the following year. And so it's been, it was, it was a good lesson learned. And so we're, we're excited to see what's coming on game one. It's been a long wait, but now we're just two days away. I know. It's felt like it's just flying by. I just remember, you know, seeing the, in the locker room counting down from 100 plus days. And then, you know, now it's, it's, it's here. Kalani, you and the team have been able to say beat Utah every time and really mean it because it is your next game. You can focus fully on this, uh, what's happening next here. Yeah, and I, I think the, the, just the anticipating the matchup when that ended last year, the guys were circling this game. So it helps out, and, and I think there's a sense of urgency in the preparation. And uh, I've just been really, really happy with this group. And Austin's done an amazing job leading the way, and he's, he's leaned on his teammates. and. You know, it's, it's a family deal for him. His, his wife's involved, too, and his kids. I mean, our, our whole team knows Ledge is, is going to be a cougar later on when he gets older. And <laughs> it's legal for me to say that with compliance because he's not in high school yet. But, <laughs> um, no, but I mean, it's, it's, he's right. They're all in, and, and it's been amazing to have him and his family involved. His parents are amazing, too, and they're right there. These, yeah. They're awesome. So it's just going to be a lot of fun Thursday night. We had a couple, and there's the fam right there. Wave fam, hey, the elite family, we got them? Yeah. There we go, good stuff. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Uh, we had a couple of week zero football games, if you will, this past, but this is really the start of college football. To be on ESPN in that Thursday night slot, knowing that the country is basically watching to see a great rivalry game out of the shoots, what does that feel like for you? Oh, it's exciting. Uh, like you said, week one, uh, in, we had a few games earlier, but with national attention, uh, national attention for the rivalry, national attention for them um, as a number 14th ranked team. It's a great opportunity for us to showcase who we are um, because I'm excited. I've seen it all throughout um, spring ball, uh, winter conditioning, summer workouts, PRPs. Guys have been bought into the system and uh, I've seen it happen and them execute their plays in this fall camp. And so I'm excited because it's a great opportunity to show what we're made out of and what we can do this season. Quick last thing, you mentioned earlier uh, a wife and a kid earlier in your life. Is it a wife and two kids now? Two kids now. Okay, so uh, let, let's, let's name your wife and your children before we let you run here. So my wife uh, is Courtney, she's right here actually. And then we have uh, two kids, so Ledger, who's three years old, and Romy, our baby girl, who's, who's one. So they keep us busy, Main, mainly her because I've been you know, <laughs> busy with football, but she's, she's been a huge blessing in their lives and my life. So. Well, it's been great to see your family back with us and great to have you on tonight. Best of luck on Thursday. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. That is Austin Lee, everybody. All right. Thanks. Looking forward to even more convenient way to shop at Smith's. Try Smith's Click List. To order online and pick up curbside by the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. And Cougar fans, you can break down BYU football with Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, Brian Logan, and David Nixon each week on After Further Review, Tuesdays, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. And if you missed it tonight, watch it tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on BYU TV. And it's always on demand. As we go to break, this week's trivia question. Over the last 20 games between BYU and Utah, how many have been decided by single digits? We'll tell you after our final break. So I hear you've got a new show. I'm on a new show called Making Good. I go around the country and I find people that are making a difference in their community. Mm. It's the best thing I've ever been a part of. You can tell you're having a lot of fun. It is so much fun. Um, let's say, wake up, the boom's in the shot. Hello? Let me check. Is there a Kirby here? I think the thing that makes us the best team 
is I'm kind of the calm to her crazy. I think we have a pretty good strategy in that we're careful planners. Paul likes to say we, we measure twice and cut once. I'm super type A. I'm super organized. I'm going to have a plan, but he can help me execute it. I think my sense of balance will play a um, big part in it and just her drive and competitiveness actually. We're definitely going to have conflicts because I do not love his driving. <laughs> We're going to be in a car for <laughs> a lot of days. Are you guys going to win? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We wouldn't be on here if we weren't going to win. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just, yeah. I think the resolution is for me to just close my eyes and not watch him driving and we'll just get past it. <laughs> there are just definitely some times that you need to communicate and there's sometimes you have quiet time. <laughs> Before the break, we gave you this trivia question. Over the last 20 games between BYU and Utah, how many have been decided by single digits? And the answer is, this won't surprise many, 17. They're always close. Very few outliers in this. That's what makes it one of the greatest series in college football is no one's getting away from anybody here for the most part. It's amazing. All right. Thursday is game day. Here's how you can get full coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Pre-game coverage at 8 Eastern on the BYU TV, 8.15 Eastern on BYU Radio with over two full hours to get you ready for kickoff on both platforms. Then the game is on ESPN and BYU Radio. We'll have Riley Nelson on that call joining me, kicking off at 10.20 Eastern with post-game coverage then on BYU TV and BYU Radio, and then a rebroadcast of that ESPN telecast right on BYU TV after the post-game show. So Kalani, we, we give you the stat right coming out of the break there. That's really what makes this rivalry great, is, is that rarely does one team run away from the other. And single-digit game after, I mean, of the last eight games they've won in a row, just one has been by anything larger than eight points. And so... It may go one way result-wise, but how you get there is almost always just a scrap. Yeah, we have to be ready for anything. I mean, that's uh, our guys have been planning for all of it, and our coaches. I mean, we visualize quite a bit on what we're going to get done Thursday night, and I'm just excited. I'm just ready to go already, you know. So uh, I want the fans to have a lot of fun. Uh, just don't worry about it. Smile and have a great time because it's going to it's going to it's going to pay off, you know. Being able to smile and, and cheer and, and be excited. It's gonna, it's gonna push all that positive vibe to our players. It's great to have you here for another season. Uh, good start tonight. Hope you have a great game on Thursday night. It'll be fun. Go Cougs. All right, fans to request seats for next week's show, go to BYUcougars.com slash Satake Show. We'll talk to you next Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, 4. Jerem Jordan, Director David Holliday, Austin Lee, the coach. I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Good night. Go Cougs.